today we are talking about uh, it's me and uh, anil vishnoi uh, we are talking about o uh, open daylight open flow and ovsdb uh, use cases uh, and the projects themselves uh, so uh, i'm the ptl for uh, the open flow plugin project and anil is the ptl for the ovsdb project uh, moving on so yeah, as I just mentioned that we'll talk about the OpenFlow plugin project followed by OVSDB project and then the use cases uh, and the references. Mm, so as far as the project is concerned, the OpenFlow project will just go briefly into the overview of the OpenFlow plugin project uh, and what's new in Boron mm, and a future direction of OpenFlow plugin project. And so OpenFlow plugin project, uh, it started off in hydrogen release, uh, and it was one of the first community projects. So it's uh, mm, uh, so it it was started between uh, uh, various vendors, uh, and the past and present contributors uh, include uh, people from uh, contributors from Brocade, Cisco, Ericsson, HP, uh, basically across the industry. Uh, and uh, we have had around 97 people who have had actually at least a single commit uh, or basically the developers, uh, uh, like there have been 97 developers who have put in patches for the OpenFlow plugin project. Mm, and, uh, and this is not just uh, the developers, there have been contributions in other forms from like in CSIT, uh, there were a lot of contributions from uh, uh, Jamo Lurson, who is uh, the the integration test team lead, uh, as well as the as well as Luis Gomez, who is uh, who is one of our who's our test contact for the project. Uh, so basically, we have a lot of contributions from across the uh, across the um, Open Daylight community, and we have close to uh, 1750 uh, commits by people and. Uh, a uh, lot of source code and a uh, lot of bug fixes. So OpenFlow plugin project as such, it's, uh, it's a pretty central project inside of Open Daylight because a lot of Open Daylight use cases uh, are actually based off uh, uh, OpenFlow uh, protocol as well as the OVSDB protocol and making them working together. Uh, and uh, so we have around 20 plus uh, consuming uh, projects which consume Open Daylight, uh, OpenFlow plugin. Uh, and these include uh, projects like the new network, which is the network VPN, uh, SFC, VTN, GBP, NIC, etc. Uh, so it's got a pretty central role. As far as uh, the OpenFlow plugin consuming consumer model is concerned, so in a typical scenario, uh, a user, I mean, if if someone wants to program a flow, uh, generally people, uh, at least the end users, generally can uh, write into the config data store uh, the, that particular flow, which. Uh, Mm, which there will be a, uh, a data change listener uh, and it will notify the, the forwarding rules manager which is, uh, which is an application inside of OpenFlow plugin uh, which will uh, in turn call uh, RPCs for the core plugin, core OpenFlow plugin and which will pass that information to OpenFlow Java, uh, the OpenFlow Java dri driver mm, and which will in turn program the OpenFlow switches. Mm. Once the flow is programmed onto the uh, onto the open uh, onto the OVS or the, in, or the open flow switches, uh, typically we also have the polling for the the, the statistics. Uh, and uh, once you receive a response from the mm, from the switch uh, about the flow, we will uh, we will be. Uh, uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, pushing, uh, uh, it, it comes to the uh, OpenFlow plugin and it will be pushing it as a Yang notification to, uh, to the statistics manager which in turn writes it into the data store. Uh, and uh, that is kind of used by a lot of applications as a mechanism to confirm that the flow has been programmed. Uh, 
similarly uh, other applications like uh, vtn uh, gpp etc they uh, uh, they do flow programming in different manners so, uh, so so what i described was uh, people for people programming uh, into the config data store via the rest conf or the rest api Mm, but uh, uh, some other applications like VTN, they will directly call the RPCs of the OpenFlow plugin to program their flows. Uh, so as far as uh, uh, what do we actually support uh, as, uh, as of today, which is, uh, 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 which is the Boron release? Mm, so we support OpenFlow 1.0 and OpenFlow 1.3. Uh, as well as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, flow programming via config data store or the RPCs. Mm. And uh, there is also the commercial uh, uh, great robustness features like uh, there is a clustering support. Mm. There is a reconciliation uh, which, is, which is a provisioning functionality which ensures that switches uh, are, uh, 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 once there is a uh, HA scenario like uh, switch restart, uh, the the flows get pushed back to the um, to the switch. Uh, all the intended flows uh, are actually back programmed back to the switches. Uh, so this is kind of uh, uh, this is an absolutely necessary feature uh, for uh, um, without which uh, uh, commercial products will not uh, work. Mm, and we also have the programming, uh, batch flow programming for higher performance. So basically uh, to send in a bulk number of flows at a time. Mm, the current team for the OpenFlow plugin, uh, this, the, the, so I've just listed out the major contributors from the last two releases. And uh, I'll not go through all the names over here. Uh, but uh, we have uh, we have a lot of uh, folks contributing towards it. Of course, we uh, uh, at the same time we are always short of people to contribute, so it's a paradox. So new in uh, new in Boron is uh, uh, if you have been following uh, the Open Daylight Open Flow plugin, uh, you might have been hearing a lot about the helium design, the lithium design. Uh, so uh, now we have standardized on this uh, work, what used to be called as the lithium design as a standard design. Uh, and a uh, few of the um, important things about the lithium design or the, the new design is that it's a cleaner design overall, uh, which lends itself for uh, uh, for current and future improvements in uh, in performance, and uh, uh, it also has a better API, uh, a deterministic API, as well as uh, better stats collection. Uh, the other feature, actually, other uh, mm, thing that was so so over the last one or two releases, we have been implementing the uh, the OpenFlow clustering. So I believe the OpenFlow clustering, the first time we implemented was in Beryllium, uh, and uh, Mm, it was not as stable as uh, it should have been or because it was the first time we had implemented it. So uh, inside of the MDSL project uh, during the, this current release, uh, mm, there was this new approach for, uh, for clustering, uh, uh, called clustering singleton approach. I believe Robert Varga was talking in the side room, uh, uh, I think uh, half an hour before. Uh, about the clustering changes inside of MD cell. Uh, and uh, so if, uh, OpenFlow plugin project was one of the projects which actually uh, um, started using this, uh, this facility. Uh, and uh, it, it basically provides and encapsulates all the leadership changes and, uh, and the OpenFlow plugin, uh, users like OpenFlow plugin can, uh, uh, can now uh, uh, listen to the, uh, uh, can, can just use, uh, use the, uh, the clustering singleton API to, re to react to the leadership changes. Uh, so this is mostly to improve the robustness of the clustering solution. Uh, other uh, 
thing that uh, I believe a lot of people across the community have been talking, especially Tom Pantelis uh, 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 from Brocade, uh, for, about the blueprint migration. Uh, so, mm, so, so, uh, so, open source plugin is one of the first, actually the first one to uh, to migrate towards the blueprint, uh, and uh, the the it's is to uh, to uh, to enhance or replace the the config subsystem, um, and uh, basic idea is to improve the plugin upgradability and to have simpler configuration. So uh, we have been uh, uh, we have been talking a lot about the performance, but. Uh, there, uh, and we have been relying on uh, the performance tools like Cbench uh, for testing the performance. But uh, there, uh, uh, we needed a little more uh, easy to use uh, test applications um, to test the performance uh, for uh, for both the REST interface as well as for uh, for RPCs. Uh, and uh, that was what was implemented during this uh, in in the Boron release. Uh, and it provides an easy to use interface basically for testing, mm, for performance testing. An additional application that was added inside of OpenFlow plugin was this forwarding rules synchronizer, which is a new uh, new application for provisioning uh, flows, uh, groups, meters uh, with the config data store. And uh, it uh, it will be uh, uh, it will be con comparing the differences in the config uh, in between the data store changes and just sending the incremental updates and include some retry mechanisms on failure. Uh, so um, so it's a, it's a redesign of the the forwarding rules manager that I had mentioned earlier. It's it's still a separate feature which we have not enabled by default currently, uh, and uh, we will uh, look uh, uh, in the Mm, in in the uh, carbon release, uh, I mean, how much improvement it, this is, and as I said, mm, as well as there were other uh, changes uh, with respect to the feature cleanup and making the table features default, etc. Uh, as far as carbon is concerned, uh, we. Uh, uh, so the current uh, the current flow programming model uses uh, uh, uses two level of uh, open flow uh, flows uh, or uh, models for the flows. Mm, so you have the abstracted model for uh, uh, which uh, which is for both open flow 1.0 and for open flow 1.3 as well as uh, it started out to be more abstracted to uh, also take care of uh, other uh, protocols. Uh, ultimately, we did not uh, uh, we did not extend the flow programming model to the rest of the protocols, but uh, historically that has been there. So, um, so you have the, the 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 model at the controller level, which is more abstracted out, uh, and uh, the model at uh, an open flow Java library level, uh, and uh, we. Uh, we end up doing the translations between these two, two models, and, uh, uh, and this can this can probably hurt us in the performance. Uh, and uh, uh, so we need to f do a POC with respect to and study the uh, what kind of performance penalties we are looking at, and if uh, if the if the penalty is significant, and um, uh, it could it could very well be. Uh, we would like to uh, to expose a more high speed path for uh, uh, for the openflow 1.3 plus applications because there's enough of difference between openflow 1.0 and 1.3 uh, but uh, going forward the difference uh, is not as much uh, in 1.4 and 1.5 uh, it is is there but it's not a fundamental difference as uh, was there before mm. Additionally, we want to have changes in the uh, in the usability of the applications uh, to have uh, config uh, parameters uh, to have an inf uh, to have a better confirmation of the flow installation as well as CLI info com commands and stats collection etc. 
for more uh, about uh, uh, about the open flow plugin planning uh, there is a ddf session tomorrow at uh, 12 o'clock uh, the design forum mm, and uh, you're welcome to join there and contribute your thoughts about what are the features that you would like uh, the open source plugin team to to uh, to handle as well as uh, hopefully you guys can come and join us and start working start picking up some of the items mm, i think with this i will give it to anil so we'll start with the vsdb project am i audible okay so OVSDB project, so uh, I quickly want to give you a little bit overview of, you know, a brief overview of OVSDB. So if you know, OVSDB is a project basically provide a plugin that, that help managing your OVSDB device. It support two kind of schemas. One is OVSDB schema, uh, which is basically a virtual search OVS we see in, you know, computers, KVMs and all that. And the other, uh, you know, schema it support is hardware VTAP schema. So all the, all the, you know, silicon who's kind of running the hardware VTAP on them, they, they you know, you can use uh, OVSDB plugin to kind of manage those devices. So I heard some of this stuff, you know, what OVSDB does and all that, but you know, we are talk, we are going to talk about more in detail about OVSDB uh, in, in a talk tomorrow morning, which I'm giving about the OVSDB project. And you know, if you want to get more details, you can go to this wiki page and we have details about what this plugin support. So uh, the crux I want to take out of this slide is this, there's another protocol that handles OVS, okay? Now, why why we are talking about OpenFlow and OVSDB together? Because you know they are different protocol. They are handling different devices. Okay, so so there's no there's there's no specific reason talking about it. But when it comes to you know open daylight and how folks are consuming open daylight, not within open daylight but external world, it's like OpenStack, OPNFV, and any of the virtualization solution builder, right? How they consume the open daylight in a virtual space specifically. That's where you know these both of the protocol comes hand to hand. Okay, so some of the use cases that we target here, those use cases are very much about the network virtualizations. Okay, so. So if you look at this, you know, this is a general consumption model, how, how things work, okay, very, very, you know, very high level, very layman term, to, you know, kind of design it is. So you have application at the first layer, you have MD cell data store in there, so your applications put their configuration into a data store, and then you have uh, two plugins, one is OVSDB southbound plugin, an open flow plugin. So what this plugin does it, it actually goes, to your machine and says, okay, you can create a bridge, you can create a termination point and all those things. So it just, just configure the device, okay? So once applications say, okay, go on, you know, to OVSDB is out one plugin, say go create a bridge and then connect that bridge to my controller back. And I want to use that bridge as an open flow device. Okay. So configuring the OVSDB is come through plugin. Once it create the bridge, and it set the controller for it, and then that device will act as an open flow virtual switch. Okay, and that in, then it connect back to the controller, and this is how the cycle happens. So this is a general consumption model, and it's been used by many of the use cases, you know, which we are going to talk about. So, you know, if, if this, is, this is the high level picture that you need to keep in mind. So, and this is, this is the control flow I'm talking about. So you create a bridge, and then it connect back into the controller. And then controller can use it to program flows and all that. So this is a more detailed picture. So this is a more detailed picture about you know the internet component of it and all that. But I am not going to go in detail because we are kind of running short on our time. So let's let's get to the use case. So this is a uh, first use case. You know this is. Basically, the first project who started using both of them together when you know it in initially started you know in hydrogen release. So there are a lot of boxes here, but the things to look at here is you know this is network plus VPN service. VPN service we added it because recently we moved network to use VPN service code and all that. 
So, uh, so this project, how it consumes, so on the northbound side, you have OpenStack interfaces, and those OpenStack, you know, drivers, basically, we have a networking ODL project, if you know. So that is for interfacing between OpenStack and Open Daylight. So any configuration you do in OpenStack, create a network, spawn a VM attached to the network and all those operations. Those operations will come from OpenStack Neutron to the Neutron northbound project. That project is kind of a front facing from ODL side who interact with the OD OpenStack. And then it down goes to, you know, uh, network provider. And network provider, what it does it, because from a southbound side, uh, we, we connect all the compute node directly to the controller. Okay, so once this compute node is connected to the uh, net the controller, network is your virtualization provider layer. So it sees there is a compute node, so it goes to the MD cell and say, okay, create a bridge on this particular compute node. And they name it, let's say, BRINT, which we see in, and you know, even OpenStack deployment or, you know, you know ODL based OpenStack deployment, we see BRINT is a bridge that we create to kind of attach all the VMs and, you know, program it for a routing purpose. So, yeah, network tell MD cell that, you know, uh, this particular, uh, you know, create a bridge on this particular compute node and that request goes to OSDB Southbound plugin. And then it also set a controller to connect it back to the OpenFlow plugin. So once a bridge is created and the controller is set, then network basically used to dump all the pipelining flows that they use for a routing purpose through the Southbound plugin, uh, Southbound OpenFlow plugin. So this is how the network kind of a consume. If you look at this, this is similar to the generic consumption model I shown you in a previous slide, right? So, uh, and, and network basically use, OVSDB also provide you a flow installation. You can do the flow installation using OVSDB. We don't support it, but you can always support it because you just, you know, it's, it's a modification of the table. So you put flow in the table and that flow eventually will make it to the bridge. But it does not provide you all the goodness that OpenFlow plugin provides, right? Right, the reactiveness and reactive programming and all those things. So that's where, you know, Network decided to use the OpenFlow plugin. And the recent version of the network, they use, you know, packet in and reactive programming pretty much for, you know, ARP responding, DSCP services and all that. That's where it's very critical for them to use OpenFlow for the flow programming. How much time I have? Okay, so we are running out of time. So service function chaining, you know, so this is pretty much the same use case. Yeah, but service function chaining use it for a different purpose. So service function chaining has, uh, they wrote uh, renderers for a different kind of devices. So, uh, but those renders are basically using these different protocol to configure the bridges. But SFC require different kind of co configuration where they create a VXGP port uh, for, for SFC purpose and they install uh, flows that is heavily used by Nisira extensions. So they use Nisira extension, they don't use OpenFlow, you know, construct they use, but they heavily use the Nisira extension. That's where they use OpenFlow plugin very extensively. And it's very critical for them because, you know, uh, a plugin, we have extension, a Nisira extension, or basically extension framework where you can add, add your own extensions and use it. So that's where OpenFlow plugin comes handy for them. So it's, you know, use both of the render and the things are going to be easy for you. Okay, so VTN, yeah, I'll, I'll give it to Abhijit to kind of quickly go through it and conclude it. Sorry, I had uh, I'd planned to uh, cover more in detail for VTN, but uh, we are, since we are running out of time, uh, I'll just uh, quickly go through it. Uh, so VTN, it's, uh, it's a network virtualization pro uh, project. It, it's been since uh, the hydrogen release, and uh, it provides the multi-tenant uh, virtualization with using OpenFlow. Uh, and uh, as usual things, the fault tolerant uh, supports OpenStack integration, supports clustering, uh, and uh, mm, basically the key idea is to, it provides a logical abstraction plane which enables complete uh, logical separation uh, uh, from the logical plane and the physical plane. So users can, uh, uh, can define topology in a, uh, in a logical plane and uh, mm, let the VTN application write into, convert it into physical flows uh, on, onto the actual hardware. Uh, so, so users can basically overlay layer two, layer three topologies on uh, as a, uh, and act as if it is uh, mm, uh, the, the, these uh, these mach these uh, these VMs are uh, VMs or uh, machines are uh, are quite independent of the physical network. Mm, 
it it kind of uh, hides the complexity of the underlying network uh, from the tenant administrator uh, and helps uh, better manage the network resources as well as reduce the errors. Mm. Uh, the VTN components, uh, if you look, uh, it's it's very much similar to what uh, one of the diagrams that Anil had uh, mentioned, had, had shown earlier, uh, and uh, uh, and it's, it's it's a similar model that uh, uh, that typically has been used in by the other applications. Uh, so VTN essentially uses open, uh, certain open flow uh, features like the events, uh, as well as it uses the RPCs, the different RPCs. Mm, uh, I, I will uh, stop here because I'm out of time, so <laughs> in consideration of the speaker. Uh, if you have questions, uh, maybe Anil and uh, uh, I can answer or, or we can catch up afterwards. Today we are talking about, uh, mm, it's me and uh, Anil Vishnoi, uh, we are talking about o uh, Open Daylight, Open Flow, and OVSDB uh, use cases uh, and the projects themselves. Uh, so uh, I'm the PTL for uh, the Open Flow plugin project, and Anil is the PTL for the OVSDB project. Uh, moving on. So, yeah, as I just mentioned, that we'll talk about the OpenFlow plugin project followed by OVSDB project and then the use cases uh, and the references. Mm, so as far as the project is concerned, the OpenFlow project will just go th briefly into the overview of the OpenFlow plugin project uh, and what's new in Boron mm, and a future direction of OpenFlow plugin project. And so OpenFlow plugin project, uh, it started off in Hydrogen release, uh, and it was one of the first community projects. So it's uh, mm, uh, so it, it was started between uh, uh, various vendors, uh, and the past and present contributors uh, include uh, people from uh, contributors from Brocade, Cisco, Ericsson, HP, uh, basically across the industry. Uh, and uh, we have had around 97 people who have had actually at least a single commit, uh, or basically the developers, uh, uh, like there have been 97 developers who have put in patches for the OpenFlow plugin project. Mm, and uh, and this is not just uh, the developers, there have been contributions in other forms from like in CSIT, uh, there were a lot of contributions from uh, uh, Jamo Lurson, who is uh, the the integration test team lead, uh, as well as the as well as Luis Gomez, who is uh, who is one of our who is our test contact for the project. Uh, so basically, we have a lot of contributions from across the uh, across the um, Open Daylight community, and we have close to uh, 1750 cl uh, commits by people and. Uh, a uh, lot of source code and a uh, lot of bug fixes. So, OpenFlow plugin project as such is uh, it's a pretty central project inside of Open Daylight because a lot of Open Daylight use cases uh, are actually based off uh, uh, OpenFlow protocol as well as the OVSDB protocol and making them working together. Uh, and uh, so we have around 20 plus uh, consuming uh, projects which consume Open Daylight, uh, OpenFlow plugin. Uh, and these include uh, projects like the new network, which is the network VPN, uh, SFC, VTN, GBP, NIC, etc. Uh, so it's got a pretty central role. As far as uh, the OpenFlow plugin consuming consumer model is concerned, so in a typical scenario, uh, a user, I mean, if if someone wants to program a flow, uh, generally people, uh, at least the end users, generally can uh, write into the config data store uh, the, that particular flow, which uh, 
um, which there will be a, a, a data change listener uh, and it will notify the, the forwarding rules manager which is uh, which is an application inside of OpenFlow plugin uh, which will uh, in turn call uh, RPCs for the core plugin, core OpenFlow plugin and which will pass that information to OpenFlow Java, uh, the OpenFlow Java drive, driver. Uh, 